Hello, this is Haka the Bean, and today we are going to be tumbling down our slash tumbler again. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. With that having been said, let's get right into this. Vampire dude to his vampire friend. Wow. Looks like there's only one coffin. What do we do? Other vampire dude who sh reads a lot of fan fiction. We could share it. And they were two mates. Oh my god, they were two mates. Oh yeah, the icons are very interesting. Twitter has become an adult website, and the Tumblr has become a period tracker. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh damn, guys! My brain is making thoughts! Uh, sad to be thinking. Wizard Snapback. Oh, heck yeah. That's an amazing ink hat idea. Oh, this is one of those uh, philosophical ones. I love these. I wish people would stop saying it's a lie. Well done for wasting half a year. Did you make someone smile in the past six months? Did you stroke a cat or throw a stick for a dog? Did you learn a new fact or teach someone a new joke? Did you laugh, cry, scream, or sing in the last p six months? Because if so, congratulations for not wasting your time at all. I really needed this. I'm bringing this back for the assignment to remind everyone. You did not waste your, your year. You made this far. That's already not wasting your year. You made through a year. You laughed. You cried. You smiled. You saw the sun and felt the rain. And most importantly, you're still here. You did not waste your year. You made this far, and I'm proud of you. That's super positive. <sighs> Trans women cannot can't compete in Miss Italia. 100 plus trans men signed up in protest. This is my new favorite ed headline I have seen all year. Become ungovernable. I took courage, used my dead name, and signed up for Miss Italy because fighting transphobia is intersectional. And even though I'm not a trans woman, I decided to fight for their rights. Okay, this is one, funny, two, courageous, three, how solidarity works, and four, based. It's amazing. Oh, jeez. It's hard to read. Is it just me or is NASA weirdly aggressive in their article about black holes? Go to black hole, I'll destroy Earth. Black holes do not go around in space eating stars, moons, and planets. Earth will not fall into a black hole because no black hole is close enough to the solar system for Earth to do that. Even if the if a black hole is the same as the sun were to take, take the place of the sun, Earth still would not fall in. The black hole would have the same gravity as the sun. Earth and the other planets will orbit the black hole as they orbit the sun now. The sun will never turn into a black hole. The sun is not a big enough star to make a black hole. Can a black hole destroy the earth? No, you idiot. Black holes aren't planet gutlettons, you bitch. And the earth isn't some weak ass planet that would just fall in into a black hole like a sucker. 
And that dumbass sun that we've got isn't big enough to make a black hole like other stars, you fool. This reads like an exhausted a, a doctor explaining that no, you freaking moron. Vaccines do not cause autism. As I was autistic, I can tell you that they do not cause autism. I was born with it long before I got any vaccines. The sun is not going to become I'm a black hole, you stupid slut. Love this. I'm already loving this. This is already a good day. <sighs> 2D Legend of Zelda game where the princess gets sealed inside a giant crystal and the hero has to save her, as one does. Except the hero manages to obtain the, the crystal at the end of the tutorial dungeon. The bad news, nobody knows how to break the crystal without killing the princess in the process. The good news, the princess is fully aware are inside the giant crystal and can use, still use all of her magic and princess powers within a limited range. Okay, stop calling her the princess. We all know she's going to be named either Zelda or after one of the um, three a golden and gods that were introduced in Ocarina of Time. But most likely Zelda. The big, big bad knows this and tries to work around it by keeping her in a large empty room with nothing nearby for her to target. That didn't work out so well. The whole rest of the game is basically the hero lugging this big stupid crystal around in order to bring the, Chris, the princess within range so she can use her magic to actually solve the problem at hand. The hero basically play, plays basically like Link from a typical Zelda game, except all of the hero's upgrades relate to making them a better crystal carrier. Throwing the crystal, teleporting to the crystal, doing an AoE attack that affects the line between them and the crystal, etc. When you switch to playing as a princess, you're both invulnerable and physically immobile, and a joystick moves you or talking your ankle for your spells instead. Those spells are mostly puzzle only environment and manipulation stuff like an elemental team, plus some basic damaging blasts to discourage bosses who get too close. There are recurring sequences with the heroes indisposed for some reason, and you need to figure out how to use the princess as spells to move her into a position to solve the current puzzle and untrap the hero by using environmental effects and contraptions to fling the crystal around. In the final battle, the big bad proves to be completely immune to both the hero's weapons and princess spells, and winning involves setting up some sort of some sort of Rude Goldberg sequence of uh, events which causes the princess to fall on big bad's head it from great height, killing him instantly. <laughs> this is the most hilarious Zelda uh, game I've ever er, heard of, and it's amazing. How do you process grief? By writing from it until it fights me in the middle of a sunny street on a beautiful day. I don't think the way we are taught about grief is ever right. You don't fully process it. You just kind of grow around it and the painful knocking against your rib cage gets less frequent due to the space it occupies. My best friend has been dead for over 14 years now, and every February is a low month, even if I lose track of time. Your body keeps score of the grief and pain, even if you don't. I think. I was on a bus the other day, and a child I'll turn around and looked nothing like my best friend at all, but had his teeth, and I cried. I think process in grief Is allowing yourself time to and it cuts off there. Hate that. 
be messy and gross and unconsumable in your discomfort because we're told so many things like grief is love persisting. And yes, that is true, but grief is ugly and hurts and catches you when you least expect it. I was six, six years out from my other friend being gone and had a full meltdown in the out of a grocery store with no warning and no trigger. It just hits sometimes. I think grief is less about processing and more about existing around every day until you become roommates. Only bumping into each other occasionally on alternating weekends. Reef had extremely beautiful and profound thoughts I had to share. There is a quote about mothering your grief. I like to think of grief like that. How when they die, you have to take care of yourself like you're an infant. You focus on the basics. Eat, sleep, hydrate, clean, repeat. And when things end that they're gone, it's like... Oh. It's like a toddler having big emotions you don't have the words for or the capacity to understand yet. You deal with the meltdowns as they come. Then time goes on a little more and you've grown up some more. And you have more words to describe your feelings now. And you're prepared for how to deal with the meltdowns when they do come. And the grief doesn't go away. You have the experience to know how to get yourself through it to the best of your abilities. When many years and decades have gone by, I suppose it's like your grown-up child calling to check in every once in a while. The grief is still there. It's a part of you. But it doesn't take up the entirety of your home anymore. This is too early in the video for the is heavy it's topics. Dang it! What is the coolest rock you have? Probably one of these. I don't know what kind they are. The geodes. You're supposed to crack them open. What the fuck? How could you waste an egg? A what? How do people not know what an egg is? This hurts. Hmm. <sighs> Why did you never criticize Obama? Majority of people here were kids and were not politically aware nor active in politics. Yeah, I was like... Hang on. I don't quite know when Obama first got in prison, but... I think he was president until I was like 16, so... He first got in and when I was freaking 8. Then he got in again when I was 12. I didn't even know that wizards were fake at the time. How the heck was I supposed to know about any sort of Obama stuff? Not an excuse. You're right. I should go off on my six-year-old for being a liberal. I'm not saying that. Seems kind of bad. And also... Shush. Eight years old. College reading level. The weight of the world on my shoulders. 20 years old, illiterate, the way of the universe has given me a crying back pain. Wait, that's me. This is just, this is me in a picture. What the heck? My favorite part of the Batman 2004 is when Bane shows up in literally the second episode and beats Batman within an inch of his life. Wow. Whoa, dude. When I heard about rad fans, I thought it would be some of most radical females, but these chicks are saying some bogus things about other babes. <laughs> oh. 
This one is a big one. This one's going to be a long read. Random, but I think the way people talk about abusers as hypercompetent and calculating manipulators that know exactly what to do you makes it easier for people to get into abusive uh, relationships. The people who abused me probably had no idea what the frick they were doing. It was so bad, I still don't, don't, don't regret bugging out, but I don't think they had a secret wall covered in red string linking notes like how to fuck up this person specifically. Pretty sure they were in their own bubble the whole well, them time, actually, and yeah, that does make it harder to recognize or get out of. This. This is why I always say that in abusive relationships, intention means nothing and results mean everything. I spent so long forgiving people who treated me like shit, for treatment like shit because I was convinced, and maybe I was even right, who knows, that they didn't mean to, even when they refused to listen to my objections or change their behavior. It wasn't because I necessarily wanted to hurt me. It could be that I hadn't explained myself well enough. It was really hard for them to do, think and act differently because of trauma or circumstances, etc. Had this happen, and when I, I decided to tell a certain abusive person that they were hurting me, they, 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 they said they couldn't help it. So when I went to someone else, they remembered that I didn't tell them, like, okay. Whatever. And then one day, I realized none of that fucking mattered. Because I was being treated like shit and I was miserable. It didn't matter if that was the intent of their actions. That I was still the result. And I didn't deserve to be treated like shit. No matter what was going on with them. I'm a person who deserves just as much consideration as they do. But they were the only ones being considered. The difference between won't and can't is purely academic. Where they won't or can't treat you better, you can and should go find people who will. No one is entitled to your suffering for their shady behavior or to have relations they don't properly maintain. As someone who received their personal trauma at the other children my own age, I was like eight or something, this is so important. As someone who, uh, who also had very abusive people in the past who literally did not, who literally demanded I consider their feelings on everything when they wouldn't consider anyone else's feelings on anything they ever did. I believe this is so important. People sometimes I just don't know better, but if they don't change, if they keep abusing you, keep blaming you for their own mistakes, and make you feel dumb about everything you do, then you, as a person yourself, can never make it right with them. Set your lines, warn people of all of those lines, and make them pay the consequences when they cross them. Even if you lose them or make them angry, you're a person too, and they do not own you. It took me 15 years to recognize that I didn't have lines. The few ones I had were too close for comfort and maybe aggressive as hell when told. It is the people who don't know better that will hurt you the most. And those who won't change their behavior for you are the most dangerous ones. Stay safe. This post articulates something I felt for years, but I've struggled to put into words. It's so important, and I wish I had heard this message like 20 years ago instead of now. I hope this information can protect people in the future. And I hope that me covering it in this video protects people in the future. <sighs> Some highlights from the library while I was doing research. Po, 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 Hoffman. Edgar Poe, Bjorn Brasman, 
Why Poe drank liquor? Is a po 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 hopping like duck duck goose? Between duck 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 goose. Yes, you have to yell it. Fill your body with cranberries so the horse that kills you gets a central surprise when he begins to feed. I will give the horse that kills me no such luxury. Agreed. <sighs> oh sure, Barbie has a thousand different professional qualifications. It wasn't was the last time she was allowed to kill a man. The patriarchy must end. I said corrected. State sanctioned violence Barbie. Trademarked. Do I really want to have this on my screen? This actually might be bad for YouTube. <laughs> I made some pancakes. Oh my god, are you who's shitting me? Oh my god, it's pancakes. Oh my goodness. It was pancakes. That looks so bad. Dang, you're gonna get like get me a ban from YouTube. <laughs> Me, sees northerners complaining about studio apartments costing over one thousand a month. Me in Louisiana, laughs as write my rent checked for four hundred bucks. Me grabs my sword to defend myself against a man-sized mosquitoes burning crosses in my front yard. I can't tell if this is making fun of northerners or southerners. Probably both. I can't remember if we already read this. Let's just read this now. And see if I remember reading. I remember reading this. I don't remember if I read it in a video. On why conservatives don't get to have their wish fulfillment media. I've been thinking a lot about why online discourse around any media is so incendiary these days. Why is there so much outrage about every single new thing that comes out? <clears throat> it's always been this way to an extent, but it seems to really, it seems, it, well, it really seems to have gone into overdrive lately. And the focal point of it all for the last few last few weeks seems to be Bart Irby. Why is a movie about a doll for little girls making so many adult men upset? Well, there's many reasons. A lot of them stupid, very stupid in nature. But to put it bluntly, it's because a lot of people are upset that it doesn't pander to them. More importantly, they are upset that it panders to someone else. As do most movies. Somewhere along the, la on the, along the way, the English language media landscape has shifted to completely exclude things a certain demographic wants to see. Of course, much of it can be explained by things like demographic shifts and society as a whole changing over time, but not all of it. In the last few sequences, it seems like we've completely changed our approach to how we consume and interpret media. Instead of taking its themes and messages on their own terms, we look at how they apply to and influence the real world. Instead of shutting up and enjoying the a ride, we critique the morals of what is presented, which completely shuts down a lot of violent wish fulfillment media, most specifically the kind that conservatives ex enjoy. And I get it, I do. When they say to people these days no longer understand that it's just movie, they're not exactly wrong. 
Well, they don't understand it's, a, it's their own fault. Let's take a look at their Ernie Harry. In many ways, Clint Eastwood's character is the ar archetypical typical conservative action hero. Rude, ruthless, emotionally dull, and willing to break any rules as long as it gets results. But does it? In the real world, well, it doesn't. But of course, movies aren't real. Dirty Harry succeeds because the script wants him to. He's in the right because the entire plot is a puzzle engineered for precisely such a character to slot right in into it. And the people making it understood this. The movie's director, John Siegel, whose views were dramatically opposed to the characters, didn't want to make a piece of social commentary. He wanted to make a cool action movie. Even Clint Eastwood, famously conservative, called it an escape his wish fulfillment. Their expectations were simple. Audiences were transported into a world where things worked differently, enjoyed their time, went back to the real world. But that's not what happened. The audience broke into broke the social contract. They never left the fantasy world behind. No, they could barely distinguish reality from fiction. Andrew Robertson got death threats aimed at the character he played. A fictional serial killer which never existed. An entire generation of Americans grew up thinking that Dirty Harry was a character worthy of being emulated in the real world. And that's just one example. When Martin and Soros is made a taxi driver, he probably knew some people were going to misunderstand this movie. I doubt how he knew someone was going to misunderstand it so hard that they would go shoot the president so Jodie Foster will fall in love with him. Over and over again, filmmakers, writers, even musicians had to relearn the same lesson. People have a hard time distinguishing fiction from reality. And the more conservative they are, the truer it is. So now most of us understand, creators carry a moral obligation for the content of their work. And most audiences are willing to hold them responsible for that. So if you are a conservative, please remember next time you insist that it's just a movie or it's just a joke, it's not that we don't understand that, it's that you don't. Conservatives like to say it's just a fictional thingy, but like, they literally live in a delusion where, or, or the things they a fight against are actually happening. You know the delusion, and that they have about, uh, let's take for instance, trans people and how we exist. They live in a delusion where uh, apparently children as young, young as, uh, well, any age are getting a, a, a puberty blockers, HRT, and surgeries. When none of that happens, you get puberty blockers at 14. At 16, you might get on, on HRT. And at 18, when it doesn't matter anymore because they are literally adults at that time, then you can get a surgery. And either way, from the very beginning, you have to go through so many hoops just to prove who you are because we still live in a, in a world that doubts us people's identities. Anyway. Okay, hear me out. A mini jigsaw a Barbie on a glittery pink bike. Fine, you guys win. My heart leaps and desire pulls way down low. Way down there. Way down low. Down there, you know. Down there in the low place. The bottom area. You know, my underneath parts. You know, way down in my deep organ. My central... Or basement, my arousal or wrench, if you will. You know, the pink underworld, the love fissure, this elacious tunnel, if you get what I do not like this. If you get what I mean. I'm starting to dislike this more and more. The pleasure catacomb of catch my drift. My subtly sinkhole, my low lying wetlands, you know, the throbbing coastal flood flake. I am getting very uncomfortable with this post. My erotic basin, the petals of my abyssal flower. You might say the deep ocean habitat where the slimy hagfish of pleasure feasts on the dead whale, 
of course, is of desire. My band, you're very a bite of carnal knowledge. You know, there, that, that body part. Yep, that one. I think this would be less uncomfortable if they just said the freaking N word instead of, of, of these weird ways of describing it. That actually made me uncomfortable. Man, I had a dream that magic was discovered in the near future, but it was like shitty unbalanced fantasy magic. Like within a few weeks, people had wikis and guides up on how to glitch in immortality potions and time spells. People are just tossing homemade black holes around. I looked on the news and saw some of speed it ran away to the edge of the universe. Write a book, write a book, write a book. First of all, how dare you assume I'm illiterate? That post that made me uncomfortable strip and marked as NSFW. There's a ton of shit you can get in life if you're willing to subject yourself to the mortifying horror of asking for it. Can I take this exam? A different time? Sure. Me crying on the inside for the effort of asking. Thanks! Oh, I love this. We need to go back to using selling strips full time, like immediately. Yes, it would take longer to get places, but the aesthetic is unmatched. Like, there is nothing sexier than this. Can't wait for OP to get scurvy. Are you under the impression that the shifts themselves are what cause scurvy? Weren't these shifts used for colonizing India and the slave trade? Once again! Do you think this is the fault of the ships themselves? Several users will try to make any ship problematic. Literally. <laughs> Things toddlers and I have in common. Don't want to go to bed. Why get dressed when I could keep playing in my PJs? I'm very tired, and therefore I hate you. Just five more minutes. I haven't eaten, I'm hungry, so I'm going to cry about it. Needs cookies and juice to function. Well, cry if yelled at. Wants to pet every animal and all I see. Excited about stickers! I mean, stickers are pretty freaking cool. Okay, this might have to be the last one. How are we doing on time? God dang, it's it's been 33 minutes. Who are those little fellas that live in the sand call? Oh, I forget the word. The little fellas that can hurt you with their hands. They have an armored body. They're these little men that bury themselves in in sand and swim in the ocean sometime. Crabs? Yes, sorry for the a foolish answer. <laughs> no such thing in this sub. Obsessed with the fact that there's a writer out there who calls himself Pissbot. But carries himself with the unflappable politeness of a confused Victorian gentleman. Okay, that was funny. Okay, that's the end of, end of this video. Uh, of uh, tumbling. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I will be seeing you too.
tomorrow, although I have no clue what I'm going to be doing, it's probably going to be something odd or backroomsy or maybe even something from the SCP universe. Who knows? It's always a mystery what I'm doing in tomorrow. But until then, goodbye!